looked an awful lot like Jesus and kissed the most uh, piercing and kind eyes. He asks you a question. What did you do for your fellow man? It's a life review. You're going year by year through your whole life. Anytime you're stuck and you don't recall, one of the walls comes alive as the movie of your life and it shows you doing something for your fellow man. For me, that was when I was 10, 10, 11 years old. I didn't know if I did anything for somebody then. And um, the wall came alive and there I was as a crossing guard at my grammar school. And I just took that responsibility so seriously, especially with the little kids, the, the kindergartners and the first graders and so on. Um, and according to wherever I was, I call it paradise, but that was what I did for my fellow man when I was 10. I was trying to answer the question over and over again, what have you done for your fellow man? I think I'll be processing this the rest of my life um, and trying to figure out if, you know, is this it now? Is this what you want me to do? You know, um, is this my work? To be loved and loving is important to me. Um, and to care about my fellow man and do something for my fellow man. I think I need to volunteer somewhere. Um, I keep thinking that that's important. Um, if for no other reason than to meet so many other people different than myself uh, who might have a message for me or might have a piece of the message or something. I don't know what it is, the work that I have to do. I know it's important work, otherwise I wouldn't be back. You died on the table. Uh, what, what memory do you have of what happened when you left your body? The memory was heaven. And I knew exactly where I was. There was no in-between. It was instantly. And I knew where I was. What is all this noise? Yeah. And this person behind the desk says, don't you know? I said, no, I don't. Tell me what it is. These were all intercessory prayers coming up on my behalf. So all the noise that you were hearing were people praying for you yes. to not die. <laughs> yeah, right. really. And in disbelief, I said, you got to be kidding me. I don't know this many people. <laughs> and the person behind the desk said, would you like to hear one? A prayer was drawn out. It went, it was, I was drawn to it, basically. And I heard every word that man was praying. And it was verified because I think two Sundays before, they had started recording their messages. And it was all on tape. And so when you heard it, it was word for word. What, uh, actually, as I understand it from the book, you said the prayer and then you listened to it? Is that yeah. what happened, Glenda? Exactly. That's exactly, exactly what happened. Um, so Mabry said, Mabry Kane, our friend, said, well, we prayed for you a lot of times. I don't remember a particular time. So Ron explained again, said the prayer, quoted him ex the exact phrase, and then they found the tape and it matched exactly. Ron, you made eye contact with a young man in heaven. Tell me about that. It was very significant. This young man, almost in a mischievous way, said, I made it, I made it, I made it. What did the Lord tell you about this young man? Remember this. And then when we came and they said, well, we had Scotty's funeral this week. No need to pray for him anymore. And after the meeting, Ron went over to her and you said, I don't know why I ask, but uh, did you bring a picture of Scotty? And Carolyn said, well, I normally don't carry a picture with me, but I went back into the house tonight to bring this. And she reached down into a large bag and pulled out a framed 8 by 10 of Scotty and showed Ron. And the next thing I knew, and Ron dropped to his knees in front of her, just collapsed, and said, that's the young man I saw entering heaven. You, you had no doubt whatsoever it was him.